felt great. Really felt like great contact there. Compressed the ball and I think for a lot of people watching that's what they're looking for. Weight forward, squeeze the elbows. Another push draw. Yeah. Low point after the ball. This video I'm going to spend some time with my good friend Dennis yes, Sales. Sir. We're out here in Texas and I'm in his gears machine. We're going to measure my swing against the amateur golfers that we had in yes. this week for the golf school and uh, figure out what I do better than they do Yes. and how we can help some folks at home. Absolutely. So I've got this crazy outfit on Dennis. Do you want to just share briefly a couple of things about what Gears is and how it helps you teach and how it's going to help us today? Gears is a 3D motion capture system, mm -hmm. optical, that will measure the interactions between the golfer, the shaft, and also the golf ball mm -hmm. and impact. It is a really cool tool in relation to capturing anything and everything that the golfer does, being able to break it down at a very high level and then just simplify it for golfers to digest. Nice. A little push draw. I tell you what I'd like to know with the gears, which would be really interesting for me, is how the center of pressure is moving in the mm -hmm. swing. It certainly doesn't feel to me like I'm shifting my weight. And when we get mm -hmm. onto the topic shortly of the students we had this week and some of the things they struggled with, which are like low point control and contact mm -hmm. and consistency, I'd love to see how that looks on gears because I just don't get the opportunity to have my swing measured. So when we're looking at a positive number, that would be a positive number, would be going towards the target and negative number would be going away. So you can see as you're starting to move from P1 to P2, you're actually moving a lot more towards the target. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you can see your left shoulder turns down. Right, you can see where the top of the femur is kind of moving. You see mm -hmm. the center of mass. The center of mass actually moved a little bit more to the right. To the right. right. So he moved to the trail side. And then as you're approaching the top of the backswing, I like to kind of see this everything starting to move right towards uh, the lead foot, which mm -hmm. is everything is moving towards the lead foot, just a touch. But you don't have to move that far because you're already a lot further forward than people who are shifting off the golf ball. So at the top there, I'm how many inches sway? Zero. Zero sway. Uh, so with the pelvis, you're 1.5 towards the target. Towards, okay. The rib cage, 1.2. Mm-hmm. And then in the shoulders, uh, 1.4. Okay, so a little movement towards the target with all of those centers. Target. Yes. And then by the time you get to P5 at assembly point, you're quite a bit more forward. So pelvis is 3.2, rib cage 3.9, shoulders 2.4. So I like that little feeling of that trying to bend the, the rib cage a little bit, trying to lead with it a little. Mm. So the center of your rib cage, if we were to look at it this way, Mm -hmm. You're a little bit in that range right there, and then things start to kind of catch up and line up a little bit. So there you are at six. And then down at impact, 4.9, 2.9, 2.0. Okay. Pelvis starts to catch up and pass. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to put you a, a bit more forward. You can see if I were to go and just remove where the left shoulder was, where the right shoulder was at the beginning, and then how it's moved. Right, so I think that is some really nice movement. Uh, I, I would say like you hit the ball very solid. I can't see you hitting things fat. Yeah, right. Things are solid. That center of mass, that weight forward piece, though, is the part that you would say it's the reason I don't hit it fat. It's yeah. why I hit it solid because I get my weight forward. Here's a golfer that was struggling with the low point control. Right, he was hitting fat shots, thin shots, hitting behind the ball quite a lot actually. Yes. And one of the pieces that you would say and identify would be the weight location or the center's location again. Yeah, where you can see that he's already starting with the upper a lot more tilted back. So if you start to look at the tilt and the spine. Interesting. So just on the camera, that's he's yeah. got more of the upper center back mm -hmm. set up. Yeah. Whereas mine are lined up yes. a little more. Yeah, I like closer. seeing things way more lined up, one on top of the other. So if we're looking at these two components right here, and if we just kind of go and mark those guys up again like we did last time. So when we start kind of comparing the both of you guys now, right? Kind of see where he starts, and then how you guys start to move. From one to two. So there's already like more of a movement away with his upper center to yes. the trail side. Yes. So he's moving back. Yeah. So now the pelvis has moved quite a bit more, right? Yeah. You can see that quite clearly, even just on the visual, even without the measurement. Yeah. 
So like as you get in you know, to, to three, center of mass way is 2.3 inches. Away. Away. Yeah. And then as he keeps getting into the top, you can see that you know he moved a bit away, a little bit further back than really what I'd like to see. Yeah. So if we go down to assembly five, so now he's got himself, he's got the chase going, <laughs> right? Trying to get his body into position to get forward enough. But the problem is, as you can see that his lead hip is just so much further back than where it started. Right, so he hasn't gotten himself forward enough. So now all of a sudden from five, this is where your advantage comes in. You're way out and in front of it. And then you can see what's happening to your shoulder sway. So like you're out in a, in a good spot as you go five, five and a half, six. You can start to see yourself going backwards hmm. with the upper. Okay, so that's what I would define as blowback, right? The upper center rotation starts to fall backwards and then because he never got himself more forward, all of a sudden now he's getting quite a bit more back. Yeah. And those silhouettes are really showing quite clearly there the difference in how much further forward mm. at impact that avatar is mm -hmm. on my side on the left versus him on the right. Mm -hmm. So what do we do to help him? I would stack him a little bit more at setup. So feel more weight on the front. More about the upper and the mm. lower, not so separated. Got it. Yeah, I'm gonna reduce the right side tilt just a touch more. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then as you start to get to, to three, three and a half, I like to kind of feel like I'd have my hand right by the ear. So if somebody wants a little bit of flow, I'd give you a little bit of space and then you'd be moving away. The drill that you helped him with immediately was the, you sort of said as he gets to the top, he's like landing into that lead side and yeah. doing quite a significant push yeah. forwards to get the feeling of how to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you'd be kind of feeling, yeah. So we did like basically two drills, you know, move off the golf ball a little bit and then get forward. And then the feeling would be like moving forward right away. Mm -hmm. Weight more forward as a sort of distilling that down into a couple yeah. of feels. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying he felt like he had his weight some like 80 or 90% yes, on his yes, lead yes. side, which might seem extreme, but I think for a lot of players, that's actually where they need to live. They need to feel that. Yes, absolutely, pattern. yeah. So we'd put the weight more forward, and he got his low point more forward, yes, if you remember. Yes, that was pretty quick, yes. So the trap man number I have there for my low point, 4.3 inches after the ball, yes. which is, I would say, pretty good. Yes. I remember his was almost around zero, right? Zero, yes, it was zero. Just hovering either and side. And it was a plus or minus of, I think, 1.8 inches. Yeah, much closer to zero but then a greater standard deviation yeah. into the mix, yes. So that's a direct link between the location of the centers, the yes. weight, the location of the low point on the ground of the swing, yes. and as a consequence of that, the ability to produce some sort of functional, consistent contact. Yes. So that's really the system that we're using there. That's why we would say weight forward. Yes. It's to help with the strike. Yes. To move an inch, you gotta go five inches in yeah. the opposite direction. Feel versus real. Yeah, then that's the key, right? As a start point, if you were losing the battle with strike, yes. you might just say to someone, well, just put a little bit more weight yeah, in the yeah, front, yeah, yeah. put a lot more weight in your front. Yes. Second student, this one was wild for me, how the elbows and the arms are affecting the strike. Yes. You've got the two players on the screen, that's me on the left. Yes, and then we got Raju here on the right-hand side. And the metric we're looking at here is the distance between the the arms elbows. or the elbows, yeah. Yes, the elbows, guts, yes. Yeah. So mine's 13.15 inches apart. And his is 12. 12 point, yeah. so one inch different. The big thing for me is just an understanding of the reference point of where it starts, mm -hmm. okay? And then what happens in, in the swing. Okay. So I, I would say that in the swing, uh, one of the things I did is I just wrote the number of where we started, and then you'll see these numbers kind of right here in yellow. So yeah. that's kind of measuring it in the swing. Okay. That as you're going, uh, they're starting to open up a little bit. A couple of inches, I would always say, is okay. 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 So as you're getting all the way up to the top, right, you're getting yourself to three inches bigger in, in the gain of mm -hmm. space. Okay. Uh, Raju started at uh, 12.18 as he's getting himself all the way up to the top. As he gets all the way to his top, he's at 15. So the amount of space gain is about the same. Mm. Three. That doesn't really change. Now, the big difference will will start to be is, is in the downswing, right? They remain kind of the same-ish. They'll start to squeeze a little bit. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. So they're getting to your point. They're a little farther apart at the top. 
mm -hmm. and then they're squeezing and getting closer together all the way back down to impact. Yes. And then when we look at uh, Raju, 15, he's doing the basically the same exact thing. See, they're getting a little bit smaller, smaller, mm -hmm. smaller, mm -hmm. smaller. And then now, there you can already see they're already getting wider. Mm. Right, so as he's coming into impact, right, his elbows are now opening up at a much faster rate. So they're further apart. They're further apart than they were set up yes. by about three inches. Yes. Mine are further apart by about one inch. But you're, you're mine already are started to squeeze. You're already squeezing. Getting closer, whereas his are farther apart and continuing to widen. Yes. So then what, what starts to happen, what you see with a lot of really good swings, is as they're kind of moving into the follow through, you can start to see that it's getting smaller. So that smaller, through smaller, impact smaller, there, my smaller. elbows are getting closer and closer and closer. Yes. I think that's such an interesting measurement, which yeah. again, like you say, good ball strikers demonstrate that. Yes, yes. High handicap golfers are gonna start <laughs> doing the opposite. Yeah, they have a tendency to get much wider. So yeah. through the strike and going into the follow through, you can see 17. by the time you get to P9, 19. he's 19 inches, right? So. Uh, as they're coming through, it's just widening and widening, which then creates havoc with the radius, which then creates havoc with the face control, the Contact, divot. Right. Yeah. And then that's where you start to see a greater deviation with all the numbers. Yeah. So, so the squeezing is a big piece. It's huge. I mean, mm. I know you've done videos. I, I think of videos I've made previously where we hold the ball yeah. and I talk about squeezing the ball and yes. squeezing the elbows. Yes. And you made a great point <clears throat> yesterday when we were talking about yeah, this. Yeah. Some people will actually, the ball is going to limit them yeah. in the back. Yes, it will. The arms would be close. I'm doing this as a lefty so nobody gets confused. That's right? great. I think uh, it's good. So as we're getting to the top, they will start to open a little bit. So there's a little separation yep. here. So I'd want to see the elbows opening. And then from there, I think this is where the key comes into the equation. Now they got to learn how to then, you know, squeeze mm -hmm. those elbows together to help, kind of that starts to help them shallowing out the club. The squeezing piece, mm -hmm. and then being able to match up as you're coming down into impact, the squeezing component, and then matching up the hands and mm -hmm. arms to the turn, so that when you get to, to P9, now I've got myself in a position where I can squeeze, yeah. right? And then they can kind of come off again a little bit. I wouldn't let anyone really practice or swing <coughs> past that P9 position no. until they had this under, yeah, yeah, yeah. under control. And just a point on that, there's an assumption, maybe wrongly by a lot of golfers, is that just thinking arms straight mm -hmm. keeps them straight. Yeah, yeah. And I'm actively contracting yeah. my muscles and squeezing my arms oh, yeah, together. Yeah. The squeeze word is actually very, like very valid. valid. So hitting balls to your point, swinging down and squeezing and stopping. Mm -hmm. So the drills that our players took away primarily, yeah feels of weight forward, we sometimes call that the wrench drill, yep. mm -hmm. and squeezing the arms, arms mm -hmm. straight, stopping at P9, which we sometimes call 90-90-90 yes. drill, you said that there as well. All of these drills are included in the video courses that I'll link in the description of the video. So if you want to learn more about the P system, where to stop, or how to piece this entire thing together systematically, you should click on the link below this video. So weight forward, keep the pelvis moving forward, that's the wrench, getting the weight in front. And I'm really gonna try to squeeze my arms extremely actively through the ball. Yeah, absolutely. That was there the best one go. of the lot. Perfect. And people might wonder if that ball's not flying very far, but it's a 190 seven yard seven iron. Yeah. With a super short finish. Yeah, so if we start looking again, like in the perspective in terms of what those elbows are doing, 12.96, so you're actively squeezing them in even a little more than the last one. 12.96 at the start. Yeah. Open them up again as always. Got a little bit of that squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. As you're getting down there, there's the squeezing more. And then just tightening up real nice. Mm. I like that drill. Yeah, that would have been perfect with the, the ball. Yeah. Ball would have came out. And the feeling like what I'll tell people is like, you know, you feel like the ball is going to come out. Mm -hmm. Then, oh my God, I got to go try to catch it before it hits the ground. And then you got to kind of carry that guy around you. Setting the wrench, I think that's a great way to start it, mm -hmm. right? To help you just focus on just more of the arms. So pushing them a little bit more forward will help you with the arms. Once you get pretty good with that, then you can kind of feel maybe a little bit more neutral and make it a little bit more of a dynamic move. Yep. But I think presetting some of that stuff already so you don't have to worry about the timing aspect so you can let the learn how to use the arms, I think is a really important piece than it is trying to do too many things at once. You said it nicely, it's just keep it simple for the player. Yeah. A couple of basic concepts. Yeah. Better contact, 
better distance, better control. Yeah, absolutely. Dennis, thank you, man. That thank was really you. awesome. I'm going to get out of this gear. I'm not going to walk down the street looking like this. Thanks for your right time. Up. We just finished our golf score. If people want to learn more about yes. taking lessons with Dennis, myself, or together, we're going to put some details down in the description. But all of Dennis's information is here, just north of Texas. Yes. Great studio. If you're anywhere near or even if you're far, make the effort, come down and see him. We talked about the wrench drill and the elbow squeezing yes. drill. If you want to work on those, click on the video that's going to be up here somewhere. It will talk you through those drills more specifically. Absolutely. I think those are great drills for people. Thanks, man.